Welcome to AP Biology. Today I want to talk to you about the regulation of cellular respiration and some feedback mechanisms. So for feedback mechanisms, there's positive feedback and negative feedback. A lot of times students think that positive is good and negative is bad, and that is absolutely not true. Most of our feedback is negative. It means changes away from your set point cause changes back toward the set point. So in this example, we've got maybe a concentration of ATP here. And you need to keep a stable concentration of ATP. If you don't have enough, you need to make more. So let's say you make a lot of ATP. Well, you have more than enough, you don't need that much. And so you need to slow down cellular respiration. So here is glucose and it's broken down to pyruvate in glycolysis. And then it's broken to acetyl-CoA in pyruvate oxidation or pre-Krebs. And then here's the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle in which you're breaking glucose all the way down to CO2. You do a little that here too. Um, but anyway, what you're doing is ripping the electrons off, sending them to the electron transport chain, and finally making some ATP. So let's say you've made plenty of ATP. ATP can go back and slow down, stop an enzyme at each of these steps. So it stops an enzyme in the Krebs cycle, it stops an enzyme in pre-Krebs, and it stops, or it inhibits, it slows down an enzyme um, in glycolysis. So in, in um, this class, when you see an arrow, that means go or activate like an enzyme is activated. If you see a line with a, a, a bar at the end, it means stop or inhibit. Inhibit could be stop or slow down, right? So inhibit. So if you've made lots of ATP, this is going to be a high level of ATP here. The line is the amount of ATP you should have. If you made lots of ATP, you're going to go ahead and stop or slow down or inhibit some enzymes that's going to slow down this whole process. You're not going to be doing glycolysis so much. You're not going to be doing the Krebs cycle so much. So that means you'll decrease your amount of ATP. Eventually, you might have a little bit too little. And so what's going to happen is you're going to stop stopping. So you're going to stop inhibiting here and here and here. And so when you're not inhibiting anymore, you can go. And so you're going to do, do the glycolysis Krebs again and make more ATP. So that is negative feedback. Or you could call it feedback inhibition. Feedback inhibition happens when the product of some process goes back and slows down or stops something earlier in the system. So feedback inhibition is the most common mechanism for control of metabolic pathways. It's when you your final or one of your final products stops something you know, earlier up. If ATP concentration drops, respiration speeds up. When there's plenty of ATP, respiration slows down. ATP is a molecule that we have um, in limited supply. So we only have so much of it. And it's not super stable. So making a lot to just keep around for a, another day, um, you don't really do that because ATP has three phosphate groups. Here's your, let's say this is your sugar and your, um, like the adenosine part in your sugar, right? And these are your phosphates. Those phosphates are negative. They don't really like each other a whole lot. Um, it's, it's not a super stable molecule. So you just make the amount that you need. You don't store it for later. This molecule is the same molecule missing a P, and this molecule is the same molecule missing two Ps. So the first one, we're going to call this first one ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This second one is ADP, adenosine diphosphate. And the third one is AMP, adenosine monophosphate. These molecules are the same molecule except for just that final uh, phosphate group. So this has one phosphate group, ADP has two, and ATP has three. So you want to have the right amount of ATP around, not too much because you, you really can't stockpile it. These phosphates hate each other. They're negative. They'll come apart from each other anyway. Um, you want to have the right amount, certainly not too little. So here's another example of that. This is glycolysis which starts with glucose and ends with pyruvate. And I told you not to memorize the intermediates. I don't really want you to. Uh, this is fructose 6-phosphate, which is an intermediate, and fructose, did I say that? Fructose 6-phosphate and fructose 1,6-biphosphate has two phosphates on it. So these are intermediates in the um, glycolysis pathway. If you have too much ATP, ATP will inhibit. That's what this one means, inhibit. 
it will inhibit um, this enzyme, phosphofructose kinase, ACE, ACE. It's an enzyme. It's an enzyme needed to go from this step right here to this step right here. If you have plenty of ATP, you don't need to continue glycolysis. You can slow down a little bit, so ATP will inhibit it. Citrate, that's, an, that's a, a molecule that you make with the Krebs cycle, right? Whoops, like this. And so here's citrate. If you have plenty of citrate, uh, it will also come back and inhibit this enzyme. On the other hand, AMP does the opposite. So this, remember, means to stop or to inhibit. This means to go or to activate. So remember, ATP and AMP are almost the same molecule. Here's ATP. And here's AMP. AMP is used as a cell regulator a lot. AMP is this one with just one phosphate. ATP has these three phosphates. So we've got AMP here, ATP here. If you have way too little ATP, you're probably going to have way too much AMP, right? And so if you have a lot of AMP, that's a sign that says, oh no, bad things are happening here. Let me change color. Um, if you have a lot of AMP, that's your body saying, whoa, if I have a lot of AMP, I probably don't have much ATP. That's a problem. So that says, hey, enzyme, go, go, go. I need you to get activated. I need this whole glycolysis thing to happen so eventually I can uh, make some ATP. So AMP is a positive regulator, but ATP um, is a is a negative regulator.